The next category in our seven steps is the category of as good as it gets. So we started off with an us versus them. Then we moved to an appreciation of rules. Then we looked at a notion of friendship. And now we are, or golden rule kind of uh, relationship building. And now we're looking at as good as, as it gets. And as good as it gets means a sense of, of joy, of just loving the moment that you are in. And I want you to think a little bit about a moment where you just felt that life was as good as it gets, a special moment. And think as I'm talking here for the next few minutes of what kind of mood that put you in. And not only what kind of a mood it put you in, but also how it made you feel about reaching out to others. Did it make you feel more constricted, like you wanted to be by yourself? Or did you want to feel a little bit more outgoing, wanting to connect with other people? Now, for me to start off with, um, in terms of a moment that was as good as it gets, I'd have to go back to when I was, I think it was nine or 10 years old. And I was living on our farm where I grew up. And we had lots of horses on the farm. We also had several dogs. And I remember that one spring, we had one stallion on the, on the farm. And we pretty well suspected that he had bred um, one, of the, one of the mare's um, ponies. And so we were not surprised when in April, uh, a little colt who we named a uh, full name, Cherry Bay, was born. Uh, I remember seeing the, the, the birth and Cherry Bay emerging. And a week later, the uh, Cherry Bay, my father put Cherry Bay on his shoulders, her front paw, her paws rose on his shoulders, and they danced around the pasture together. I'll never forget that moment of this little this little, this little pony dancing with my father in the horse pasture. Um, and we were able to get to her right away because she was born to, to my, my horse, Chrissy. And she was just very, very gentle. So she let us get to her, her little one right away. The next one, about a month later, we had another, um, another little colt. And this one was expected. This was the one that we had expected. Um, uh, the mare's name or the mom's name was Star. And so we named the cult Alpha Centauri after the star Alpha Centauri. And she was much more reclusive uh, and wanted to keep the cult away from us. But I remember sitting for hours, just as still as I could be in the hot sun, just motionless. And the cult would get more and more inquisitive. And you would come over and finally, uh, step by step, day after day, and he would start nuzzling my, my head a little bit. And then I'd reach up when he did that and I would scratch right under his chin. And he liked that. And so I came closer and I would get back behind his ear and he liked that. And so then I was able to stand up and to get behind, um, you know, toward the front of his back. And then before too long, he was the gentlest uh, little cult that we had on the farm. But then as a surprise, there was another one that was born, which was totally unexpected. In fact, I remember calling my dad at the, his law office and said, Dad, Missy's had a cult. And he said, that's impossible. I said, it's, she's got a cult out there. And he came home and there it was with a little cult jumping over um, uh, its mom. So that one was totally unexpected. But for a nine or 10 year old boy, that is a summer that is as good as it gets to have three little cults running around on a farm and uh, to be able to just enjoy them or love them. There are other things that happened that day. We got another dog on my birthday, which was awesome. And my favorite baseball team was actually playing fairly well that year. So that was a moment that was as good as it gets. And the question is, for me is, you know, what's your favorite moment? I mean, is there something that you can connect to? And I'm just going to mention sports being one, but there's all kinds that you can connect to. It could be listening to a, to music, it could be watching a film, it could be being at home with your family. But just to give, just do a couple of examples that others have shared with me or that I've experienced. I mean, you, if you think about going to a big game, you know, an ESPN game day kind of a game where there's lots of exp excitement and you know who you're going to root for, but it's just you're soaking in the entire atmosphere is one of those. But maybe it's not a big fancy sports game that has nationwide coverage. Maybe it's um, you're watching your kid play. Uh, I'll remember when my son was, uh, was and is a, a pitcher and he was about 12 years old playing in a little league baseball game or the equivalent. And it was in April and it was cold and it rained. They were still playing in rain. It was about 50 degrees. The kids were chilled to the bone. It was in the last inning. Uh, it was a tie game. Uh, he had been struggling with his pitching. He was a little guy too. They called him, nicknamed him Little Lefty. 
and the first player up, um, the son of one of my best friends, hit a booming triple, which is really the biggest hit that my son had given up all year. So the, with nobody out, and that, so he was on third base. And then it was the best team that they were playing to. The other team got all excited and were banging on the dugout. And I looked out at my son and, and it's cold, it's wet, he's tired, he hasn't done well, he just gave up a big hit. And, you know, he's out there and preparing the speech of, you know, sometimes things don't go as well as what we would like. He ends up striking out the side and um, it ended up being a tie game. And for me, you know, as a dad and as a sports fan, I was like, this, wow, this is, this is as good. Another one of those as good as it gets, but you know, it's not, doesn't have to be anything like that either. I've had a lot of students, MBA students who have shared that they play on a, you know, after work softball team or a soccer team and it's not whether they win or they lost but just the camaraderie of being out there and doing something with your colleagues but in a totally different light and that for them is as good as it gets the work so what i'm suggesting to you is that there are times and places where it's good to experience as good as it gets and to refresh your memory of what it felt like to be good as it gets and when you're having tough times, and there are tough times in, these, in this country, and there may be tougher times that could be ahead for sure, you know, I'm not talking about a sense of escapism. I'm talking about a sense of remembering and also refreshing your memory of moments where good as it gets, because when, as, when things are going well, as good as it gets, it's just pure joy. But when things are not great, but you can remember or to think back about those moments when you did have the experience of a good, as good as it gets, it gives you a sense of hope. And in either of those con connections, I think it not only helps reorient your perspective, but it also gives you a sense of being able to want to reach out to other people and share with other people and to build bridges with other people as well. So that's the next step, as good as it gets. The next one will be a sense of perspective.